After eight long years of Barack Obama's administration, I have to ask the American Jewish voters out there, how long are you going to have your heads firmly up your asses in regarding how anti-Semitic and anti-Israel Barack Obama is? And as such, the Democratic Party, since he is the head of it. Now, this video isn't for everyone. If you're an American Jewish voter and you care more that a guy can use a woman's bathroom than you do Israelis' right to exist, or if you care more about letting tens of thousands of mu unvetted Muslim refugees in pour into this country instead of the constant threat that Israel has against its Muslim neighbors, then yeah, this message isn't really for you. If you care more that Barack Obama has his anti-Semitic, anti-Israel street cred to flaunt at parties with his globalist buddies who also hate Israel, then yeah, message isn't really for you. This message for those people who, because of the media whitewashing it or because they really haven't plugged into it, haven't realized in the past eight years how often and how vehemently Barack Obama has attacked Israel, has undermined them, and has basically just said, eh, they don't really have uh, any right to exist. Case in point, this most recent uh, UN resolution in which the American uh, ambassador abstained from under uh, directions from Obama, think of it like this. You're in a relationship, uh, you're Israel, uh, and you're in a relationship with this girl, and, you know, it's, she's not really good to you. She talks about you behind your back, she makes fun of you with her friends, she cheats on you every now and again, she flirts with uh, your enemies, and, but you still cling on because you, you, you have a history. And then right before, oh, I don't know, let's say the prom, uh, and you're, you're on the way to meet her, guess what? She's over, uh, getting bent over the falafel cart, uh, getting rammed up the ass, uh, by the guy who tried to kill you by cutting the brakes on your car, and then try it again by poisoning your food. And, yeah, she's, and she's laughing, he's laughing, they're all laughing at you, Israel. That's basically uh, the past eight years uh, of the Obama administration. And it started from day one. Well, not necessarily day one, but it started right from the rip. March 2009. Obama uh, has America join the Human Rights uh, Council on the UN. Basically, it sounds great, yeah, human rights, but there's a reason why George W. Bush uh, didn't join up. Because the Human Rights Council is basically a uh, grab-ass uh, group of people who hate Israel and who will ignore the human rights violations of China, of Darfur, uh, of the Congo, and focus all of their energies at the alleged human rights violations of Israel. In May of 2009, Barack Obama tells Netanyahu, you have to stop the resettlement pro uh, program immediately. Netanyahu, you know, wanting to, uh, being a reasonable man, wanting to make progress, does so. Uh, the Palestinians refuse to negotiate at all. And then Obama comes back and says, well, this is Israel's fault for not making any type of effort. He then slams Israel by saying they have found it very hard to move forward with any bold gestures. I don't know, capitulating to exactly what you asked for seems like a good enough gesture for me. It's not Israel's fault that the Palestinians will only be satisfied when Israel is wiped off the map. In June 2009, Obama gave what is now known as the Cairo speech. In it, he basically says that Israel exists only because of the, uh, of the tragedy of the Holocaust that they had to suffer. Then he goes on to say the Palestinians have been suffering just the same. Basically, Israel is acting like Nazi Germany. Now, yes, uh, six, over six million Jews were exterminated during the Holocaust, and not really uh, anything remotely close to that happening to the Palestinians, but to someone like Barack Obama, that doesn't matter, as long as he can relate uh, Nazi Germany to Isra Israel uh, that's all he really cares about. In July of 2009, Obama says he's going to put daylight 
between the U.S. and Israel. Basically, being good allies uh, is not a good thing for Barack Obama when, you're, when those allies are Jewish. In September 2009, Obama tells the U.N. that, quote-unquote, America does not acknowledge the legitimacy of the Israeli settlements. In May of 2011, under Obama's authorization, the State Department claimed that Jerusalem was not a part of Israel. In December of 2012, Obama's Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, said that the Israelis, quote-unquote, lack empathy. And if, I, if I'm going to quote directly, the Israelis need to demonstrate that they do understand the pain of an oppressed people in their minds. Because apparently Jews don't know what being oppressed feels like. I mean, we don't even have to go back a thousand, thousands of years to when uh, they're being uh, enslaved by Egypt and building pyramids. No, no, no. We can go back in some people's lifetime to when, again, six million Jews were wiped off the uh, face of the planet. But yeah, yeah, uh, the Jewish people don't understand uh, being oppressed. Sure. In August of 2014, in the middle of a shooting war, Israel uh, requested Hellfire missiles from the Department of Defense. They were going to get them until Obama personally stepped in, got involved, and stopped the shipment of Hellfire missiles. While Israel was actively fighting, he put the kibosh on resupplying them. I want you to keep that in mind because we're going to get back to something a little bit later concerning just that. In January 2015, uh, we see that on top of being uh, anti-Semitic and anti-Israel, Obama is also a ridiculously huge hypocrite. Now, you've heard of all this uh, big talk he had about respecting a nation's uh, voting sovereignty and not getting involved in another nation's elections. Well, in January of 2015, Obama sent an envoy to Israel armed with a couple hundred thousand dollars in order to influence the election uh, in order to get Benjamin Netanyahu uh, removed from office. I mean, this isn't even like, oh, he hacked an email. He sent a team to undermine the Israeli uh, parliamentary election in order to uh, get an official, uh, an uh, legally elected official, removed from office. Netanyahu ended up winning, and Obama refused to call him to congratulate. Him. Fitting. And then, of course, uh, more recently, the UN resolution that we spoke of, uh, the Iran deal, basically empowering uh, Israel's biggest enemy um, with the means to wipe them off the map. So there's that. Now, I don't know why. Uh, Jewish voters so blindly uh, love Barack Obama, uh, so blindly support the Democrats, uh, regardless of what they do, uh, regardless of how they hurt Israel. Um, I, I don't get it. But in contrast, let me talk about a president who towed the line, backed up an ally, and basically saved Israel from being wiped off the map. He's Republican. Uh, and, you know, there's stigma to his name, but there should be statues in Israel to him. Because in 1973, during the Yom Kippur War, when Israel was surrounded by all sides, running out of ammunition, running out of supplies, President Richard Milhouse Nixon authorized Operation Nickelgrass. And between the month of, from October 14th, 1973 to November 14th, 1973, he sent countless numbers of air supplies with munitions, tanks, artillery, supplies. Basically, the bolster that they needed in order to fight back uh, from their enemies and save their country. I ask you, would Barack Obama even consider doing such a thing? The past eight years have told us no. Uh, if anything, he would probably uh, supply the Iranians, uh, the Palestinians, and cheer, uh, be a cheerleader on the sideline for the annihilation of Israel.
That's what his actions in the past eight years have taught us. Now, as I said, if unvetted uh, Muslim refugees into this country, if men using women's toilets, if uh, unaffordable health care, um, if those things are more important uh, to you as an American Jewish voter than the sovereignty and the safety and the security of Israel, then by all means, keep voting for uh, keep voting for Democrat, keep voting for people who Barack Obama supports, and you know just forget about Israel. And then when Israel eventually uh, gets wiped off the map because of policies that Barack Obama uh, pushed forward, you don't have to worry about it because you you know, you were part of it and you got what you wanted. Now. If some of this was a revelation to you, if some of this is new, some if you if the media had whitewashed all of this and you didn't realize what an anti-Semitic, anti-Israel uh, bigot that Barack Obama was and how much he hated uh, the Jewish people and the Jewish state of Israel, then you know think next time before you vote. Don't don't blindly vote Democrat because you think uh, Republicans are bigots and Republicans are you know against Israel and against Jews uh, because they're not. Um, it was proven by Richard Nixon, it was uh, proven who the real enemy is by Barack Obama, and yeah, that's that. Uh, we'll see what President-elect Trump in about 24 hours, uh, when he becomes President Trump, will do. Um, by all means, by all, uh, by all means, we hope he is as big a supporter of Israel as he appears to be, and It'll be good uh, for our allies to know that we will ally with them and not leave them high and dry like President Barack Obama was all too willing to do. And if you're wondering why Barack Obama would do this, here's a, here, here's a, here's a photo, here's a little meme uh, that kind of puts it in perspective and answers that pretty succinctly. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, if you liked it, if you want to watch, see more of what is coming out from me at Bullets First, uh, please subscribe to the channel. And once you subscribe, hit the little bell uh, next to the subscribe button to double subscribe. In case you didn't know, YouTube has changed its policy. When you subscribe to a channel, you won't always get updates about when new videos are posted unless you hit the bell and uh, double subscribe. I'm not sure why they changed it. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't like the concept because it seems a little uh, underhanded that YouTube will dictate which videos get promoted and which don't. Uh, so please subscribe, ring the bell, double subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one.